you love lemon, this is the bake for you. This iced lemon loaf with poppy seed is so delicious, moist, and packed with lemon flavor. You're gonna love it, and you're not even gonna realize it's gluten-free, because it's that good, and the texture is amazing. Hi, I'm Carolyn, and this is the Chili Bakes Gluten-Free Podcast and YouTube channel, and today we're making iced lemon loaf with poppy seed. So those poppy seeds will add a beautiful color and a nice crunch to this soft, tender, buttery loaf, and it is amazing. You are gonna wanna make this. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for hanging out with me in the kitchen. It's one of my favorite things to share with people what I do in the kitchen and hopefully give you guys some tips and tricks so you have recipes to try or you feel confident to do something in the kitchen that's gluten-free. It's cheaper, it's easier, and you know what's in your food. So those are three things I love about baking gluten-free, and I'm here to show you how. So let's talk ingredients and equipment. This uh, lemon poppy seed loaf, I want to call it a cake. <laughs> Doesn't need any special equipment except a loaf pan. I'm using an eight and a half by four and a half pan, but you can use a nine by five or an eight by four. It'll make a bigger loaf in the smaller pan and a little bit flatter loaf in the larger pan. And then you need probably at least three standard size lemons because we use a decent amount of zest and lemon juice in the cake because that's what we're flavoring with. I don't like to use extracts. Vanilla extract is an exception. Okay, maybe peppermint. You know, there are a few extracts, but I, I like the taste of actual lemon. So we're gonna need quite a few lemons, at least three juicy lemons. Sometimes they're dry. Have you ever had a gross lemon that was dry? That's an aside, and some poppy seeds. You need two tablespoons of poppy seeds for this recipe, so make sure you have enough. Mm, they're so good. I'm so excited about this bake. Let's get to baking. I forgot to say preheat the oven. Put your rack in the center of the oven. Uh, line your pan with a piece of parchment or grease it and then you want to let's turn it to 350 degrees. All right, so here are the dry ingredients. We're doing one and a quarter cups cup for cup multi-purpose flour. Then we're doing one quarter cup almond flour, blanched almond flour. If you can't have almonds, you can just use another quarter cup of the regular flour or another nut flour. Um, I like the way, the texture it makes, but if you can't have it, obviously you can substitute it. Then we have one teaspoon of sweet rice flour, which adds some of the weediness or the weedy feel, mouth feel. Um, and then we have one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. And then we have half a teaspoon of salt. And last but not least, two tablespoons of poppy seeds. These are just beautiful poppy seeds. They are just so beautiful. Um, I got some other ones that looked a little strange, but these ones are lovely. And it's what uh, gives that distinctive crunch and beautiful texture and um, color to the bake. And we just have to whisk this whisk, I can't say whisk, whisk it together, and then we're done with the dry ingredients. There we go. So we're relying on fresh lemons and zest for flavor for this lemon poppy seed loaf. So what we want to do is have lots of fresh zest. So I've uh, grated about two lemons for two teaspoons of zest here, and then a teaspoon for the icing as well. I'm doing it all together. Um, that way I can just get it out of the way. And then the best way I know to um, juice lemons is to microwave them slightly. And then when then when you roll them, you get more juice um, and you don't have to squeeze as hard. That's my best tip for that. So I'm gonna do all that beforehand so I'll have the stuff for the icing and for the cake all ready to go. So here are the wet ingredients. We have three quarters of cup of softened butter. Let's hope it's soft enough. It's winter, so sometimes it's still too hard to mix. And we're gonna cream the butter and sugar together. And we have one cup of granulated sugar. And we're just gonna get this nice and soft and mixed. And I'm gonna do it and uh, stop in the middle so I can, you don't have to watch me mix the whole thing. If I could turn it on. Okay, so now the butter and sugar are well creamed. There's no big cold chunks of butter in there. And um, we're just gonna uh, add the eggs one at a time. And I'm gonna keep doing this and repeat it off camera and I'll show you what I have at the end. So now I've scraped down the bowl, all the eggs are added and we're gonna add the other wet ingredients. Here's four tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. We have a half quarter cup of sour milk or buttermilk. It's got a gross weird texture because it curdles a little bit when you add acid to it. So I didn't have buttermilk, so I added a teaspoon of milk, no, <laughs> a teaspoon of lemon juice to milk to make a quarter cup. This is a quarter cup of unsweetened applesauce. 
Um, I put that in my gluten-free bakes to keep them moist, but also because I can't add as much oil with the flour I use because I feel like it weighs down the dough. And this is two teaspoons of fresh lemon zest. So I'm not using any extract because I don't like the way extract tastes. So this rind uh, zest, which is the rind, um, will give that lemon flavor and a half a teaspoon about of vanilla extract. And we're going to mix all this together. All right, another scrape. And then we're done adding the wet ingredients together. We're just going to get the dry and get out of my way here. Okay. I'm just going to add the dry and we're going to mix it till it's barely mixed. We don't want to over mix. Otherwise, that's how you get tough loaves and bread. I'm going to switch to my Dutch whisk, but you could also use a wooden spoon. And we're just going to stir this in nicely. It is going to be a thick batter, just FYI. Really thick batter. Look at those pretty poppy seeds in with that bright, uh, kind of lemony yellow color dough. It's from the egg yolks and also from the lemon zest a little bit, but it smells divine. It's got a beautiful lemon smell. Oh my gosh, this is such a great bread. So we're going to scrape down the sides just to make sure it's all mixed. And then we're going to spoon it into our prepared loaf pan. This is an eight and a half by four and a half. You could use a nine by four, nine by five. No, nine by four or an eight by five. Okay, I think I'm getting the sizes mixed up here. Anyway, somewhere around that, if you use the bigger size loaf pan, your loaf will be smaller. The smaller size, it'll be higher. And I used a piece of parchment paper to help lift it out, and I used a little butter to tack it down so that it's not lifting out and I don't get batter underneath it. At least that's the theory anyway. And in the dough goes. All right. I'm going to smooth it out, and then it's going to go in the oven. Between 45 and 50 minutes is what I'm... That's, I'm crossing my fingers because God knows. Sometimes it's different. All right. All right. Into the oven it goes. Look at that beautiful loaf. So I'm always thinking about baking, eating something gluten-free and delicious. So if you're interested in gluten-free baking and would like some help learning how to do that and would like to know my tips and ticks, uh, not ticks, tips and tricks and techniques and recipes that are delicious, they're so good you won't miss the wheat, then you should follow, hit like, subscribe, all the good stuff. So I know that what I'm doing is really helping people and that you're enjoying my videos. I love sharing with you and I'm always going to be in the kitchen. So check it out and hang out with me. I'm here twice a month for the long videos and then I'm here for lots of shorts and other things. I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, all the usual stuff. Anyway, thanks for being here. I'm super, super grateful for everyone who's here and spending time with me. It, it makes me a little teary, which sounds corny, but... That's kind of the way I roll. I'm a little bit of a crier. So thanks for being here. I'm super grateful. Here is the loaf out of the oven. Oh, it's hot. I did test it. It is springing back, so it is done. We're going to let it rest five minutes, and then we're going to do some of the icing. So we're going to up the lemon flavor. I'm going to make a glaze to pour over this hot loaf. It's cooled about five minutes, and we're going to take two tablespoons of powdered sugar and a tablespoon of two tablespoons of lemon juice. We're gonna whisk this, to whisk it together. And I'm gonna heat this up. I'm gonna heat it up so the sugar dissolves and it gets nice and hot. And the reason I'm gonna do that is I want it to have a syrup consistency. Because if I pour this in a gluten-free thing, sometimes stuff gets a little soggy. We don't want soggy, we want moist and filled with lemon flavor. So I'm gonna microwave this just till the sugar dissolves and it's like nice and steamy, maybe just to the point of boiling. And I'll get back to you. So here's the hot syrup that I just microwaved, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds. There's a little lemon zest that decided to join the party, okay? And it's nice and hot. So what I'm gonna do here is take a skewer and I'll poke holes throughout the top of the cake. Just poke them all over. All right, okay. Randomness is good here. And then we're just gonna spoon this over the top and let it soak into those holes. And we're going to let this cool completely before we ice it. And this just adds an extra, well, an extra level of yum, of course. All right, let's make the icing. I have two and a half tablespoons of fresh lemon juice here. I'm going to add some of it and start mixing it. I'd rather it be thick to start with because it helps uh, get rid of some of the lumps. And it's really hard to thicken your icing to the right consistently. See if you get it too thin. It's much easier to thin it out. So... I, I use conservative methods and use as little as possible and then add more. Also, the zest goes in there, but I'm going to wait a minute. 
Okay, clearly I needed a lot more. That's actually perfect. I want it to be able to drizzle a little bit, but to stay pretty thick. Because it is gluten-free, I don't want a really wet icing. It's just going to sog out the cake. Yeah. So we're going to add the zest. Get in there. Okay, there we go. Look at that beautiful icing. Oh my gosh, yum. Now, if you're not going to serve the cake for a while, I'm, I would wait to put the icing on, wait for it to cool, and then put the icing on completely. Um, that way it has less chance of um, being soggy or could just, you know, gluten-free is weird. So that's one of the uh, things I do differently is I usually wait to ice it right before I'm going to eat it. And then if I, I've already iced the whole thing, I do store it in the fridge. It will save better. And there you go. All right, so the loaf is pretty cool. It's slightly warm, but I can't wait to eat it. <laughs> which speaks to the fact that I have no patience. So let's see how we want to style this. So it has the um, lemon glaze that I poked holes in and I spread on the top. You could have it like that if you don't want it as sweet. Um, and then I'm going to put the frosting, the thick frosting on it. And I think I'm going to put lemon slices. So I'm going to do some very thin lemon slices to put on the top. I'm trying to get complete circles here, which sometimes I'm not great at. Oh, that was really thin. Nope, that didn't work. Okay. I probably want to do oh, like four of them. Let's try this again. Emma, you have to wait. Okay, I should have four in there. All right, and I'm just going to... I want this to ooze over the top. So we're just going to... Let's make this easier. Here we go. All right, that's a lot of glaze. Woo! So let's encourage this to scoot over the sides here and ooze over because I think that looks cool. I'll put a little bit more on there to go over the side. Oh, look at that. That already looks very, very pretty. Now, it has poppy seeds. We could put like a little sprinkle of them on there. It tells people what's in the loaf and it also, I think, looks good. And then we just do some lemon slices here. There we go. And I found some mint to put on there. Hmm. Do we want the mint? I think mint is always very pretty. What do you think? Looks pretty good, right? Yay! A little powdered sugar. And there we go. Our loaf is ready to be devoured, which is what's going to happen almost immediately. Let's cut into this. Oh, yes. Ooh, look at that. Beautiful loaf. Wow. Oh my gosh. Yummy. Check out this beautiful bake. Oh my gosh, look at that sucker. Wow. Nice crumb, even distribution of poppy seeds, lots of icing. And here's my piece. I kind of made it a little giant, but, but it's lovely. So I'm excited to try this. It's moist. It smells so lemony. Mm. Oh my gosh. I took too big of a bite, so sorry about that. Mm. Oh my gosh. It is so fresh and lemony. It's got the pound cake consistency and a little bit of that like browned outside with the lemon glaze we put before we put the icing. Just delicious. Moist. Super flavorful. I made a mess. My hands are super dirty, but it is so good. You have to try this if you like a lemon loaf, if you like poppy seed, if you like lemon. It's just delicious. It's buttery. It's moist. It's really, really good. Mm, what a fun bake that was. I hope you had a good time too. Thanks so much for hanging out with me in the kitchen. I'm going to devour this loaf. Loaf. I'm going to devour this piece, but um, I'm trying to put it down so I can talk to you first. Anyway, my next podcast bake is March 20th. I'm making banana chocolate chip breakfast cookies. You'll be able to make a whole batch. They're delicious. They're moist. They're yummy. Yeah, they're going to be amazing. You're going to want to tune in for that too. In the meantime, bake something gluten-free. Enjoy it. Bake something delicious and gluten-free. All right, thanks. Bye-bye. Oh my gosh, so good.